Hi there. My name is Murli Kaundinya. I'm here with Keith Kroshlik to talk to you about effective AI ops using AI and ML. We built a platform using open source software. We want to share our experiences with you so you can do the same. We ran a hackathon within Team Wells Fargo, and we had our colleagues, Suresh Veda, Keith Kroshlik, Sandeep Mayandru, Sarath Parvadhanani, Javan Swart, and myself. We built this platform that we are calling uh, our own AI ops platform. And we had a lot of fun building it using open source software. So we'd like to share our experiences you know, on how we went about building it. So the agenda that we got today is we'll give you a quick overview of you know, what we're going to talk about. We'll share a little bit about our perspective on what AI ops is, and we'll show you all the open source components that make up an AI ops platform. We'll talk about the operational events, you know, how the legacy constructs work in a large enterprise, and how you might want to think about the new way of developing this capability using predictive modeling analytics. We'll talk about the data collection and the visualization. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Keith, who is going to take you through the remainder of the presentation. Keith? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Keith Krishulik, Principal Architect for Wells Fargo. I want to discuss a little bit uh, about AOPS and just provide a quick overview. AOPS is the evolution of operations and uses artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to see and predict the health of a company's mission critical systems. Uh, AOPS tools harvest uh, data such as logs, alerts, traces, and other data from applications, server, and infrastructure to build data sets for analytics, event correlation, and to find relationships between events. AOPS technologies can show the graph of dependencies across all environments, as well as analyze the data to extract significant events related to slowdown, outages, or other problems. Notifications and alerts can be generated to inform IT staff and predict problems, provide root cause analysis, uh, and recommend solutions. For our hackathon, uh, we decided to build our, our architect and design a solution for AIOps. We needed to, to architect a solution that could be used to rapidly solve operation issues with our mission critical systems. The solution that we designed was tailored to solve a company's specific ops related problems. Almost all COTS AI ops solutions need to be tailored and mod modified regardless of the vendor. The same amount of work uh, customizing a COTS AI ops product would be the same uh, if you were to develop it yourself. Components themselves, they could be modified or replaced uh, with other solutions. And we maintain and own the source code and we can allow other people to contribute it. Some of the technologies that we used in our hackathon AOPS platform uh, was Apache Flink. Uh, Apache Flink is a distributed stream processing framework. We used Python Keras, which is a deep learning framework, MySQL database to maintain uh, our data, the Grafana observability platform for dashboards reporting uh, and alerting. And optionally, we also implemented Prometheus for monitoring and uh, to have a time series database. The Operational events and data that we were ingesting for our hackathon project really uh, was a large and varied set. So we had ops data from applications, web servers, network devices, and other hardware. Uh, and that data in itself really was uh, divided amongst logs, traces, alerts, configuration management, uh, reference and lookup details, and summarized metrics. One of the challenges with current operations is the legacy operation platform architecture. Uh, most of the architecture that uh, pre AIOps uh, mainly is around logging and monitoring. So if you look at this diagram, you notice that most applications uh, in themselves 
are instrumented with uh, agents like Splunk and uh, you know other agents like Elasticsearch or use things like Netcool. Each one of those applications, be it uh, running on bare metal, running on VM, all you have that agent uh, implemented and they all send logs uh, simultaneously. So if you look at the right hand side, we really have a chaotic environment. It's, it's a point to point uh, uh, environment and we have a lot of replication uh, and duplication of data as well as the agents uh, and uh, software that's deployed uh, for ops in general. So with that being said, we decided to look at designing a new AOPS platform. So this is the AOPS platform open architecture. The framework of choice that we decided to use was Apache Flink. Uh, Apache Flink, I mentioned, is a distributed data processing platform. From left to right, you notice that we have different event sources. So we can take all of these uh, different events, all these log files, all these traces, all these alerts, and we can stream them in or batch them or use uh, Apache Flink's uh, uh, large ecosystem of connectors and pull that data into a Flink job. That Flink job in itself can summarize, it can map relationships, it can add other data sources to your data, it can aggregate, uh, and it can do uh, a lot of other um, data manipulation on that set of data. The data in itself can then be provided to a uh, AI model. So we can take that data set and use machine learning algorithms on it to predict um, things like uh, applications failing or predict uh, things like um, uh, outages uh, and uh, uh, anything that uh, might cause an application to perform badly. After we have done the, the, um, the aggregation and we've ran it through the model, we can actually send those results to uh, a MySQL database or we can send it to other, other destinations. Ultimately, we wanna put that data in a place where we can conduct operational BI. Uh, so that uh, operational BI platform that we're using is Grafana. So in terms of the uh, events that we ingest, uh, one of the things that is required is to be able to correlate all those events. So all the different data sources that we ingest from our Flink job, uh, app logs, server logs, alerts, configuration management data, uh, need to be joined to create a unified data set. So as you can see here in this example, app logs, we've got things like app name, log level, log message, host name, IP address, timestamp. Um, same thing in the server logs, we've got the server log message, uh, log level, host type, process data center, host name. Um, and same thing for alerts, uh, alert message, actions, host name, IP, timestamp, and configuration items, uh, host name, address. All of those, those data elements need to be combined into a unified data set for us to be able to process and pass uh, to our machine learning models. So in terms of AOPS and machine learning, we tend to use it, uh, machine learning uh, and AOPS to do correlation and predictive analytics. So as I mentioned, events from applications, servers, uh, infrastructure combined to create a view uh, of the health of the platform at any point in time. So that's effectively the graph of events. Our event sources, application, uh, server logs, traces, these are all combined uh, into individual data sets that can be used in our machine learning models. And so those machine learning models, um, in this case, uh, can be broken up into uh, smaller pieces. So we can create data sets, training, validation, test data sets, depending on the machine learning model, in this case, linear regression. Uh, we use Apache Flink stateful functions uh, with PyFlink uh, and the Python Keras TensorFlow libraries to apply our ML models to process our combined ops data set. Uh, we'd like to start with a simple linear regression approach to modeling the relationships between our applications, our middleware and servers, really based on the events we ingest. Uh, and linear regression in terms of uh, and machine learning algorithm is really the simplest starting point to use for predicting behaviors.
So a little bit more about the uh, machine learning model, the machine learning uh, and uh, predictive analytics. We uh, use Python Keras, which is just a library uh, that uses Google TensorFlow um, behind the scenes. And we actually just use simple, simple linear regression logic in our Apache Flink application. So in this case, we're using a supervised learning model. So the steps uh, when building a machine learning model uh, are pretty straightforward. In this case, we're using linear regression, so it's pretty simple. We want to create a combined data set, uh, and that, that data set really is used for three things. We want a training data set to be created initially, uh, a validation data set, and a test data set. The training data set and the validation data set really are meant to be used to uh, build a model and it, uh, be able to uh, take our ops data and start modifying the model so that we can predict uh, better outcomes. So the, the ops uh, validation uh, data set in itself can be used to provide feedback to the training data set. With that being said, after we've done creating the ops uh, validation model, the uh, final output can be uh, compared against the test data set, and we can repeat the process as necessary. So the process in itself is really to create uh, uh, your first data set, and the training set is your first pass. Validate it, uh, test it again, and then finally, when you get to a point that you're comfortable, run it against a test data set, and that should give you a hardened machine model that you can start uh, using for predictive analytics. So after our predictive analytics have been completed, we've got the output of our machine learning models. We need a place uh, and a way to uh, provide dashboards, reporting, visualization, and learning capabilities. Uh, and so in this case, we're using Grafana. Uh, Grafana is a pretty um, uh, ubiquitous product. I think uh, Grafana is used for you know, dashboards, visualizations, reporting can be used for learning um, and several other um, uh, BI needs. The data that we produce by our Apache Flink jobs is summarized, and we want to run that data through our ML model and then load it into a simple MySQL database. Uh, the MySQL database, in, uh, in terms of data, uh, we have aggregated metrics, uh, basically using SQL views and simple SQL statements grouped by count, max, average, and we expose that to Grafana using Grafana's MySQL connector. Uh, the database in itself just uses a very simple ops uh, event uh, uh, schema, so just a, just a handful of tables to hold that data, uh, and we really just want the ability to have a place to put data in so that we can do basic aggregations, and then we can create queries to show our relationships amongst the applications, our app components, the servers, and other details in our data set. And Grafana itself uh, allows us really uh, the ability to create, create quick uh, uh, visualizations of displayer data. So we can use things like histograms, pie charts, scatter plots, uh, and several other visualizations uh, for our data. And you can see here is a sample dashboard. Uh, so this is really the uh, output uh, and a high level dashboard to show uh, the end user just a little bit about our data. So you can see here, we've got a tabular view and really this is um, uh, incidents for data center. Um, you can see on the right hand side that we have aggregation. So we have the number of incidents per data center uh, and then below that, you can actually see uh, events by impact, and we've got them grouped by data center and by the impact value. So we use MySQL uh, and Grafana. However, that's um, not the, I'm not gonna say it's not the best way, but that's just a, a simple way to do this. It, if you were actually to take this to a production environment, you'd probably use something like uh, Prometheus uh, time series database. Like I mentioned, we just use MySQL to house our data for a solution just due to its ease of use and availability. Uh, 
uh, the time series database is probably a better fit for reporting on operational events, especially when they come in in real time. Um, the aggregated metrics that we used um, for Grafana, the SQL views, uh, group by, count by, max, those things can also be used in a time series database. Uh, Apache Flink in itself can also write directly to Prometheus using the Prometheus reporter library. And then Prometheus in itself actually has a native uh, MySQL exporter that can use the existing MySQL database and not require us to change any application logic. So effectively, we can just go ahead and export our data out from our MySQL database to our Prometheus database. So in closing, we discussed legacy operations, uh, our new AI op solution, building a solution with open source tools, frameworks, and libraries using event correlation and machine learning, building dashboards and reporting, and just a high level overview of AOPS in general. And I just wanna say thank you to the Databricks team for providing us the opportunity to speak about AOPS. And if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can reach us at our respective emails. Thank you.